Dr. D here, uh, bringing you the next video in the revisional surgery series today. What we want to talk about is what are your options if you've had a sleeve gastrectomy before? And I'm going to go through a few patient scenarios um, related to having a sleeve and if you're seeking uh, surgical revisional options. So briefly, this is the sleeve. I've done a separate video on the sleeve itself, how it works, the risk, the benefits, um, but I can tell you um, the way this works, we think of it primarily as restrictive, albeit all the uh, weight loss surgeries seem to have at least a one-year metabolic benefit and certain hormonal changes that occur, but we have studies that show at about the end of a year that resting metabolic rate increase that happens starts to come back down towards a new, um, new level a little bit higher than the baseline, but still comes close to your baseline metabolic rate. So what are you left with after that? In the case of the sleeve, you're left with restriction because we've removed 80% of the stomach and left you with a narrow banana-shaped tube. The surgery did nothing to change where food mixes or the length of the intestine. I generally say that adults have an estimated intestinal length of approximately 16 to 20 feet. So um, uh, what that leads to is basically, unfortunately, a lot of patients will rely heavily on the restriction, the tight feeling to control what they eat. And I think that's only partially how this works. If all you ever do with your sleeve is uh, rely on it to tell you when it's full, well, every time it hurts, you know, especially that first year, a few bites of food will make it full and it'll hurt and you'll back down. But you got to imagine every time it hurts that it's probably stretching a little bit. And although it never gets to normal size, a, a third or a doubling of the radius, so a modest increase in the diameter, um, can lend itself to an absence of restriction. So I tend to tell my patients as early as two or three years after the surgery, you'll no longer have the restriction. So what are you left with? Well, you're left with those good habits that you hopefully formed. And the best time to do that is in the honeymoon phase of your weight loss surgery that first year when the weight's coming off, the me metabolic benefits doing the bulk of the heavy lifting. You want to go ahead and have a system in place where you have maybe 50, ideally 75 or so recipes that you know give you what you need. You need to have learned by this point how to rely more on, for example, visual cues to say, I had my bariatric portion meal. I didn't necessarily get a fullness feeling or psychologically, maybe I didn't get that, that, that satiety that I'm used to getting, but you got to learn how to stop um, and eat in a way where you're always leaving a little bit of space behind and eating a well-balanced, nutritious meal in a certain way. That's how you get long-term success. So the sleeve relies heavily on restriction only once that period of metabolic benefits gone. And I think that's why a lot of people... Um, can be let down by it because if you don't spend the time to really make those new habits, all you do is rely on the sleeve to tell you when to stop eating well. That won't cut it long term because here's what I basically tell everyone. The restriction part of any weight loss surgery, it's temporary. Just pretend like it's going to be gone. The sooner you imagine it's gone, the better because that means you're forcing yourself to learn how to live and eat in a certain way that's conducive to weight maintenance. So anyway, um, that's how the sleeve works. And what I was alluding to there are some of the pitfalls of the sleeve that ultimately lead to people coming back for revisional consideration. So what are some common sleeve issues and complications? There's failed weight loss or weight regain. There's reflux or heartburn. And this could be due to something called a stricture. So here's a picture of the sleeve. This is what it should look like normally when we're done, narrow banana-shaped tube. Well, sometimes due to bad luck or scar tissue, somewhere along the body of that sleeve, it can get pinched off. We call that a stricture. This lends itself to causing trouble swallowing, uh, drinking, maybe some bloating sensation, a lot of burping, um, sometimes even pain with swallowing. And this is what that sleeve would look like if it has a stricture on the upper GI. So I've drawn in here in red what the sleeve should look like. The outline of a sleeve, normal sleeve should look like it should be smooth, kind of caliber from the top down to the bottom. 
But unfortunately, with a stricture, what happens is, guess what? The top part of the stomach, which inherently has the stretchiest muscle fibers, it's going to balloon out in response to continued eating in a narrow point, kind of at the end of the tub. But we talk about the drainage at the end of a tub. Well, if it's narrow, guess what? Stuff backs up. In response to that, the stomach's still dynamic. It can stretch, so it balloons up. And then a couple things happen, actually. Um, we call it kind of the clown uh, balloon um, phenomenon where because the top is distended at a narrow point, it becomes easy to twist it and manipulate it into different shapes, right? That's how a clown can make balloon animals. Well, same thing can happen. The top half here is kind of full and distended at a narrow point, so it can even further twist on itself and make itself even more uh, strictured or frankly obstructed sometimes. So this is bad for obvious reasons. Um, you don't want to have distension, gas pain every time you eat, trouble swallowing, feeling like things aren't kind of passing through there. So that would be one of the, relatively speaking, earlier identified complications. But the number one reason I see people's failed weight loss or mainly a weight regain, I should say that carefully, very rare to have a true failed weight loss where someone didn't respond to the surgery in general, um, but more common to see someone starting anywhere from five to 10 years out who unfortunately has regained over a certain percentage of that weight they did a good job to lose. What are your options? Here's the general list. It's going to depend on your insurance and your symptoms, what we proceed with and how quickly. But the bottom line is if uh, you can have medical weight loss as an option, Use that tool if it's working, just join the medical weight loss program. Maybe it's time for you to consider medications or something to boost some weight loss. Then there's pr sleeve preserving anti-reflux options. This would mean that we're happy with the sleeve from a weight loss standpoint. You still feel restriction following a diet, but unfortunately the sleeve, and I usually quote this for my patients, it has up to a 20%, sometimes higher chance of provoking or worsening a an existing reflux problem, a heartburn problem. And if that's getting out of hand, well, one of the things we can do, I will talk to you about, is revise that sleeve. What are your conversion options? Sleeve is great, and I, I will talk about this as a uh, as an advantage of the sleeve. And I, and I always say that with a little bit of reservation, and you'll hear me if you've had a consult with me, I'll kind of save that advantage for the last thing I say about a sleeve. What I tend to say is if um, if you choose a sleeve, one good thing about it is you don't burn any bridges. So we can convert that to other surgeries later. And relatively speaking, all revisional surgery is dangerous, but the revision of a sleeve to XYZ, in my opinion, is relatively easier and safer than once you've picked one of the other more advanced surgeries, revising those can be higher risk and harder to do. So um, conversion to a bypass, a SADI, or a duodenal switch is an option for you if you have a sleeve, depending on what your issues are and your goals. So let's go over some scenarios. Um, let's take a patient, John Doe. Um, this is a person who had a sleeve recently in Mexico or many years ago, doesn't matter where. They're having no reflux symptoms or regurgitation. They still have restriction. They say, doc, I still feel like I can... Uh, I get full easily, right? So um, same portion of bariatric meals I was eating when I first started the diet. I feel like that's still enough for me. Um, and then this this patient, John Doe, didn't have any weight regain or let's say a modest or mild weight regain, less than 25%. And that BMI is still under 35. Um, so this is a patient that I would summarize by saying they just got off track. Now, what can you do? First things first. You want to solve a problem, you got to get up and do something. In this case, come to the clinic. Discuss your desirability for a sleeve maintenance option or a conversion option. We'll go over that together depending on your particular situation. And last but certainly not least, you're going to end any consultation with me uh, by meeting the people that I work hand in hand with, which are my coordinators and schedulers. They're going to know the ins and outs of your insurance and they're going to tell you uh, what they're going to allow or not allow, cost, timing of things. They'll start scheduling appointments to get you ready. So what's next? Let's say, again, this is a person that just got off track. They still have a tool that we can recover and use, so let's use it. Uh, join the Beltline Health Medical Weight Loss Program. That gets you a professional medical, medical weight loss doctor consultation. Um, and there's new medications now that are promoting even more than the, the old average we used to follow was like, if you get a weight loss medicine, you're probably going to lose 10% of your 
total body weight. And guess what? You probably have a 10% chance of maintaining that weight um, at, at a one year follow up. So that was pretty modest, mild in a lot of respects. Um, not enough for most people. Um, but we have new medications that are really kind of doubling that percentage of weight loss, especially if you still have a tool, your BMI is under 35. Probably now we can say that we have medications that can recover you to a desirable weight. You're going to in include it in our medical weight loss program is always a dietitian that's basically going to be assigned to you as long as you're our patient. You'll have access to them to revisit how to eat with a weight loss surgery. Well, you know, what is restriction? How does it work? What about vitamins? Are you taking those? Why was it important to do that? All that stuff. Um, body composition scan. We have one of the best scales in our office. It's going to give you a multitude of information points to, again, better tailor your needs, maybe even help you pick a certain medication, depending on your discussion with the doctor or the dietitian. Where am I feeling? Why am I feeling? Is it a craving issue? Is it a um, binge eating problem that's reemerged? Something like that could kind of help you decide on what medication, also depending on what percentage fat mass we want to work on versus do we get low with our muscle mass along the way? Maybe we need to talk more about exercise. There's a lot of things that you can do under medical weight loss, and uh, we have experts to help you. Moving along, scenario two, let's say we have a patient named Jack Doe this time. This is a, also a patient that had a sleeve many years ago. Again, no reflux regurgitation problems, but now doesn't have restriction. That sleeve got dilated. Um, they didn't listen to it. They didn't go beyond listening to their sleeve. This is a patient that entered that classic, I call it kind of a, a positive feedback loop where all you're doing is, you know, using that sleeve with a certain diameter when you're done with surgery to say, hey, this stomach's going to tell me when I'm full. And they wait, they eat until it hurts. It's kind of human nature to do that, right? To eat until you're full. Um, but every time it hurt, it stretched out. And so they kept chasing that. They kept saying, oh, it's, it's just going to tell me when I'm full. Well, even at the new diameter, they're packing it full to get that feedback to know when to stop. Well, eventually it will get big enough where you're eating kind of a, I've heard this quote, doc, the first year it was hard with the sleeve. I could only eat like off the kid's menu. Now I'm back to sitting and eating kind of a multi-course meal with my family. Well, that's a person who chased the restriction to the point that it stretched, 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 restrictions gone and um, didn't do well to maintain their portion sizes um, based on visual cues. They just kept relying on that sleeve. So that's a classic situation. Let's say Jack Doe has more than a 25% weight regain. BMI is greater than 35. Why am I picking on BMI 35? Most insurances won't cover revisional surgery unless you have class 2 obesity or BMI greater than 35. Let's say Jack Doe also, for two or three years, we cured his blood pressure, which was the goal with the surgery, but now it's creeping back up and his primary care doctor's like, hey, we need to put you back on a HCTZ, hydrochlorothiazide, or a lisinopril, common medication. Then, then the light bulb goes off for Jack, like, oh, wait a minute. This is why I wanted to have the surgery in the first place. So this patient got off track too, but a little too far off track. What are we going to do next? Still got to come to the clinic. Still got to have a discussion with me. I'm going to go over the things in this PowerPoint, but I'm going to tailor the discussion to your needs and your goals. And we're going to end the day by talking to the coordinator. What's next? This is a person who may or may not still have a tool that's useful. Um, they're still going to join the Beltline Health Medical Weight Loss Program. This is a good time for me to step aside and say that um, all patients coming to us for revisional surgery, actually, um, by design, you will be entered into a medical weight loss program automatically. We're not picking on you. Some of it is that we know on average, the average insurance out there is going to require you to do so many months of courses, nutritional visits, weigh-ins, etc. So while you're doing that, we're plugging you into our high quality program with that medical weight loss doctor. Uh, to pinpoint exactly what's wrong again, maybe start stimulating some weight loss. Maybe you hit a point with medical weight loss where you're getting close to getting approved for a surgery, but you're happy and you're like, hey, I don't want to undergo the risk of a revision or a conversion or whatever. Let me keep um, kind of writing this out. You don't have to come back and see me. I'll be thrilled if you don't have to. Um, that means you've recovered your weight. You're, you're on a happy kind of uh weight loss journey again, right? So you got off track, but we got you back on track just with the weight loss program. That's great.
But if you're still not getting your goals, at least we've done our due diligence of making sure you really got the program down pat. We don't have any options once you do a revision. I'll say we have very few options and you don't want to go down that road. So you had already screwed up once, you regained weight, it's okay. Let's talk surgically about giving you another tool, another shot at this, but let's set you up for success and hammer home the points, figure out where you failed, why you failed, and how to avoid failure again in the future. I think it's mandatory to come to these classes, go through the program. I honestly, sometimes I don't like when people come in looking for a quick fix because it means probably we're going to undergo the risk of revision. You're going to fail again. So we make all our patients do minimum of a six-month uh, medical weight loss program. Your insurance is probably going to require that anyway. So um, why not give it a shot and get it right? Then we're going to start preparing for conversion. Um, what are your options? Sadie would be a great option sometimes. And I'll talk, talk about details about that. Scenario three, Jeremiah Doe, uh, sleeve may uh, many years ago, still not a reflux regurg issue, but no restriction at all. This person's regained the majority of the weight. They did a good job to lose that being my super high over 55 dangerous. Now you got multiple medical problems. Some listed here, got off track. Guess what? Next box is always the same. Come see me. Let's talk options. Let's talk to a coordinator. Let's see what the program looks like for you. The bottom line here is that tool is no longer useful. Probably medical weight loss is not going to capture your weight as good as medications are and diet and exercise programs can be. Your body's a remarkable evolutionary kind of masterpiece. Um, it's evolving around your surgeries from the moment you have them done. And it is amazingly efficient at putting calories back on our body and storing them. It's the same problem that you had before, stubborn weight that wouldn't go away. That's what got you the surgery in the first place. Guess what? If you let the weight come back on, regardless of having a tool, at, at a certain threshold, the body won't give it up anymore. So probably medications won't get you to a point where we're curing all these medical problems, correcting that BMI to a healthy BMI. So now you're looking at a SETI or maybe even a more aggressive surgery like the duodenal switch. Another scenario, John Sindo this time. Um, this is a patient that is having bad reflux, but not uh, that's heartburn issues with the sleeve, fell into that 20% of patients that just develop a horrible heartburn with their sleeve. Not a weight regain issue. Maybe you have a modest weight regain, but it, you're under that 25% and a BMI is still under 35. Maybe you won't qualify for a revision anyway from a weight standpoint. But now at this point, reflux is actually hindering your entire lifestyle. One thing that happens is if a heartburn problem exists, it'll actually deter you from eating the way you want. The key is for you to remember that education piece and come in being fully informed and hitting it off like early. What happens classically is a little bit of heartburn starts happening. It hurts to eat your dense proteins, your minced ground beef, your minced chickens, the things that hit that sleeve and make you feel full for a long time that give you good high quality nutrients. So what happens, you realize that stuff's giving me heartburn more than other food. So let me eat some stuff that won't give me heartburn, right? I mean, natural to avoid things that hurt. So guess what kind of trickles through here and doesn't give you heartburn? Unfortunately, it's carbs, things that melt in your mouth, also melt in your esophagus and trickle through the sleeve without distending it, without giving you some of that satiety uh, mechanism that we rely on. And then that becomes an eating pattern where now you've kind of uh, opened, the, opened the box, so to speak, on your probably previously existing food addiction. You start introducing a high number of carbs to get by. And I get it. So, I mean, life is stressful. You get 35, 45 minutes for a lunch break. Why would you eat something that's going to give you pain for two hours? So you go and eat some snacks or something that that'll get you by that can quickly open up all these bad habits that got you in a position where you need a weight loss surgery in the first place. So unfortunately, I've seen that happen where some symptoms are physically keeping us from eating the way we're supposed to. Now we're we're regaining weight. But hopefully you can come see me before you've regained a lot of weight and say, hey, oh, yeah, I remember from day one, Dr. D said the sleeve can cause reflux and I was supposed to report that immediately. So hopefully that's the case and we can catch you before a weight regain and really just talk about isolating the heartburn. What's next? You still have a tool, but what's wrong? 
we got to figure it out exactly. What's the cause of your heartburn? Um, I may order an upper GI study. I know everyone doesn't like it. Got to drink that chalky material, shoot an x-ray. I ha probably am going to want to do an EGD and look with my own eyes. Um, you got to do pH testing and manometry sometimes. We can talk about if that's necessary for you. Um, I would like to get all this data on everyone, but these are kind of hard tests to get, and you got to have a certain, you know, you got to go see a GI doctor, set some time aside. It is an uncomfortable test, but especially if we're talking about having certain options, like I'll go ahead and mention it, the Lynx anti-reflux surgery is an up-and-coming option that's about to be FDA approved, I think, for um, weight loss surgery patients who are having heartburn, who want to keep their sleeve, but just want to target reflux um, surgically. So in order to do that safely, I have to do a pH testing. That means we're studying the acid level in the bottom of your esophagus where we should only have a little bit of acid throughout the day that comes and goes in there. That's pretty, that's called natural or physiologic reflux. But if you're going above and beyond that and the pH test catches that, then we have an objective data point that says you have a real diagnosis of GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Manometry studying the pressures, the squeezing pressures of your esophagus as it tries to push food down. It's important to have a certain threshold, again, to have certain options. So um, the test results in this case will determine what options you have. Scenario five, Jackson Doe. This is a person that has bad heartburn and regurgitation, also now having bad weight regain and maybe redeveloping some of those medical problems. So more advanced weight regain in addition to heartburn. This is a person who didn't detect the heartburn early enough, was trying to self-treat or avoid it, and didn't come see us, right? What's next? That tool's not working. What's wrong? We're going to do studies to figure it out. But most likely, the only option at this point is going to be a gastric bypass. Once you've crossed into um, class 2 uh, obesity, BMI is over 35, and you're having heartburn, unfortunately, we probably need to do a weight loss surgery combined with a reflux surgery because the problem with the reflux surgery is they have a certain you know, they rely on a healthy weight to work optimally too. So we may be end up talk we may end up talking about a, a gastric bypass in this situation. So here's the summary slide of all those scenarios. Um, I'll briefly go through them here. Let's say you're starting with the sleeve, right? Scenario one. This was a person with no reflux, happy recoverable weight, got off track, just needs guidance, medical weight loss program. You're gonna try that for six months. If you're still not losing enough weight. Unfortunately, if your BMI is under 35, you're really not going to qualify for a weight loss surgery. You're going to have to roll with it in some cases or seek a, uh, insurance that would allow a revision with different parameters. But that's usually not the case. If you have a tool, you have a mild weight regain, again, because of the new medications, I can say probably you're not going to see a truly unsatisfactory weight loss at that point if you really follow the program and stay diligent and get on track. Um, Scenario two and three was the no heartburn, but now having modest or very severe uh, weight regain, class three obesity, BMI is above 40, well north of 55. Still, it's, it's our plan and program at Beltline Health that you're going to do the medical weight loss program. Why? Now we're talking about optimizing you for safety, having a safe conversion. We're probably going that route, but we want to make sure you're ready. And we want to set you up for success and hammer home the point that something went wrong and we want to figure out where where things went wrong. What was the stress factor in your life? Maybe that needs to be addressed before we do a surgery because doing a risky surgery and plugging you back into a stressful situation is only going to lead to, if not in the short-term complications, in the long-term, the issues that you came to us for a revision for. So we're trying to not um, have the same problems arise over and over. Uh, but in that situation, once you're geared up, prepared, optimized, now you have your, you're up to date on your information. You passed all our, our courses and the quiz. Your insurance is happy. We're going to sign you up for uh, surgery options. What could they be? I'll go over details about what might suit you and what might not, but probably we're looking at a switch or a Sadie. Scenario four was that person that really is seeing us for heartburn with or without a mild or modest weight regain. Um, all of these situations end up with a workup. Um, sometimes it's more aggressive work of the pH testing, the manometry that needs a day um, with a GI specialist to get done. Um, but sometimes we can make decisions just with the upper GI and an EGD. And um, based on what that workup shows, for example, if it shows a stricture, hey, I call that a mechanical problem. That's something that 
that can be um, sometimes worked on and the sleeve preserved. Uh, I don't necessarily advise that. There's a surgery called a strictureplasty where we kind of bust it open but leave your sleeve the way it is. High, lit, high risk and potentially uh, not the best yield um, in terms of what your goals are. Usually it's to lose more weight and sometimes that's not enough. But also the issue is usually that stricture has been there long enough and it's in a position along the sleeve where it may not be a friendly option. So um, sometimes with a stricture, guess what? You have weight regain, you got a mechanical issue with the sleeve, no longer a smart choice to revise the sleeve, we got to convert you to a gastric bypass. A gastric bypass is an anti-surgery, general surgery operation. In addition to allowing for weight, re, uh, weight loss, um, it has an 85, 80 to 85 percent cure rate for that heartburn problem. So um, that's a great option. And you can see where we could come above the stricture and give you a new pouch for a new level of restriction. And when we make the bypass, it's a low pressure system. So it lends itself to being anti-reflux. Now, um, what are some of the sleeve preserving anti-reflux options? Well, you may have a, just a giant recurrent or new hiatal hernia. Maybe your sleeve is great. We love the shape and size of it. Um, you just have a hiatal hernia. Sometimes we can fix that with or without mesh. That's what's shown here. That sleeve, if it was up in your chest, is pulled down into the belly. We're putting some mesh um, up around the diaphragm repair, this time hopefully to um, try to reduce the symptomatic recurrence, um, although some data out there has shown that mesh doesn't necessarily rec reduce the recurrence of a radiographic finding of a recurrence, but it will reduce the chances of having ongoing and recurrent reflux. So, um, and then this is relatively new, but actually it's been done for years. Um, one of my mentors where I trained is doing this a lot. This little slinky bracelet looking thing, it's about the size of like a wedding band, um, but it's a string of magnets. It's called the Lynx. It's by Johnson & Johnson. And um, we could implant that at the top of the sleeve around what's called the sphincter. So there's a sphincter at the end of the esophagus that acts like a trap door. If it's not working right for some reason, it could stay open too much. And that's what allows reflux to come up into your chest and cause heartburn. Again, we like the shape, the size. Um, you, you still claim to have restriction. Maybe we just need to target the heartburn, keep everything the same because you're at a healthy weight and you don't want an option that'll make you, quote, too skinny, um, something like that. Lynx is a great option. There's already hundreds, if not thousands, of these cases that have been done, but we are close. Sometime in the next couple months after I put up this video, hopefully this paper that we've been waiting to see, a formal research study is going to be published that shows the safety and efficacy of doing that and having that as an option. And hopefully that'll lend itself to more insurance coverage and funding for that too. Um, here's another uh, summary slide now with just the surgery options. Why do I love doing the sleeve first? Um, I do pride myself and all of us surgeons at Beltline do want to pick the perfect surgery up front, but we do wanna honor your wishes. We want any patient coming through to be comfortable with their choice. If you picked a sleeve, even if we may have said, hey, that's not aggressive enough, it's okay. You know, you wanted to take your chances to see if you could fall outside of the statistical averages, do better for yourself um, with the sleeve, and you like the thought of, hey, I wanna have options down the road. I don't wanna jump into a super aggressive potential surgery with side effects or complication profile that's a little more aggressive than the sleeves. I, I think that all that's fine. Um, you know, I'll be up front and tell you if I think you're going to fall short of some goals. I think we're wasting time. But I will always say that in a way where I'm I'm honoring, encouraging you to pick your surgery. So what, for whatever reason, you got to sleeve. And, and honestly, maybe it was a perfect choice up front. But then you either have these symptoms, the weight regain, a combination. So what does it look like to do a bypass briefly? With a sleeve, we can come up here and cut your sleeve into about a third or a half of its normal size. And if it's really gotten dilated on the outside, I can trim it and make it thinner too, a narrow tube. So we're going to revamp restriction by reshaping, resizing that tube into a gastric pouch. And then we're going to do something we never did with the sleeve, which is go down and manipulate the intestine. In fact, with all these options, we're going to be adding a critical piece to weight loss for you, which is called creating malabsorption. I'm going to make it harder for you to absorb calories. That's where the bulk of the 
persistent durable weight loss will come from once you pick one of these options. Again, if you were in the reflux arm, you had bad weight, weight, um, you're going to want to consider this bypass um, with the goal being to cure the heartburn, also help you lose weight by adding a malabsorption part to your surgery. Remember with the sleeve, I called it top half only. All we did was give you restriction. And in some ways, it's it's actually a relatively easy revision because all this should still be, unless you had private pr a prior surgery, um, everything kind of below this line, I call it the bottom half surgery of surgery is kind of virgin territory. We haven't already been down here and made connections and moved the bowel around and put stitches in places. So because all this is untouched, going from this to this, this, or this is relatively easier. Um, in terms of what we actually do with the bypass, um, I do uh, something different with the bypass that we don't worry about with the other two, which is to actually change the shape and size of that sleeve. So what we would do in that case is cut the sleeve in about a half or a third of its normal size. If it's wide enough, it's dilated, it's you've lost restriction, it's wide here at the top part. I'll also cut trim off the side too to give you a nice narrow, again, uh, banana shape. Uh, take your banana shape narrow pouch and convert it to a smaller, shorter pouch. So what we're doing is creating a pouch here for the first part of that surgery, for the second half, we're gonna come down here and split the intestine. We're gonna do that two connection technique where we bring one arm up, connect it to the pouch. The other part we're gonna connect down to itself here. Now food, instead of coming over here, mixing, having 16 to 20 feet of intestine to absorb like you have um, had with the sleeve, instead food's gonna travel some of your intestine without a chance to break down and absorb as efficiently from the new mixing point to the end, I estimate we're leaving 10 to 12 feet with a bypass uh, to do the work of normally 16 to 20. Because it's a pouch um, without a little valve at the end that we normally call the pylorus that lives here, um, this is all kind of a low pressure system and should lend itself to um, helping your heartburn. Also, if your heartburn was due to some issue, scar tissue stricture down here, obviously we're making your new pouch above that point so that would be another reason I would think your heartburn would get better. Um, and once we add the malabsorption, um, we are adding another kind of critical way that these weight loss surgeries work to your previous sleeve. And um, generally with a gastric bypass, you're looking at anywhere from 60 to 80% excess body weight loss. You know, once you've had one round of weight loss surgery, I think there's some adaptation that's happened it's questionable if that metabolic benefit is quite as good as it was the first go round, but by different mechanisms, I do think you get some of that benefit too. Um, so you, your results may not be as good as they would have been if you picked the bypass up front, uh, just because you've had a chance to adapt around your sleeve, but it should still be very dramatic weight loss. And I generally follow the same guides uh, I would if I was uh, doing uh, a bypass up front in terms of what to expect. Um, then your other options, patient with generally, you know, we're not dealing with heartburn issues, a lot of weight, some significant, uh, moderate to very severe weight regain, you're going to have these two options. Now, this is where it gets, um, you know, again, coming back to how much simpler it is to do a revision once you've had a sleeve. With these two options shown here on the left is the Sadie, we're not even going to go cut the stomach. Um, generally, I'll leave that sleeve alone, and we're going to do the bottom half surgery where I connect it to the bowel, and in the case of a Sadie, we're giving you about seven or eight feet from the connection point to the end, and you can expect sometimes um, 70 to up to 90% excess body weight loss. I usually quote the 80 to 90% weight uh, range, and um, you also with the Sadie, of course, the benefit is it's a single connection up higher in the belly. Um, so we think that protects against bowel obstructions. And then last but not least, the duodenal switch. We can take that sleeve, leave it alone up top, but now we're back to doing two connection technique. That bottom connection, I estimate we leave you with four feet or so doing the work of normally 16 to 20. Um, I would reserve that for someone in that kind of super, uh, kind of had someone who had a lot of weight regain. Is it definitely class three obesity or higher? We're looking at BMIs north of 55 multiple medical problems have occurred or come back with a vengeance. Um, 
you got a big unhealthy weight, we kind of need a big gun surgery. So maybe you want to consider a duodenal switch this time. So that's the, um, this is the, basically the scenarios boiled down to as simple as I can make it. I think it comes down to if you're having heartburn or not and how much weight gain you've experienced and how many medical problems you have and what is your goal final weight this time. And that about wraps it up. So um, as always, thank you for following and listening. I hope you find this educational and helpful, whether you're a current patient who just saw me and you need to re-listen to some of this, or you're just doing a Google search and you landed on our page. Um, I hope if nothing else you took away from this, that if you have a variety of problems, you have a prior existing weight loss surgery, you now know a place where you can come to get all your questions answered and be set up for success. Um, and until next time, uh, always you can follow us on uh, these social media platforms, the newest one being TikTok, where you're going to see Dr. D um, kind of do more fitness related uh, pearls and, and advice. Um, I hope to elevate each and every one of my patients game uh, by being that kind of leader, lead by example. Um, I want to share with you kind of what my exercise regimen is. And if you want to follow along, I think you could do that. And um, I also want to, over time, share with you information there as it pertains to more holistic, you know, what's the role of kind of stress and exercise in your weight loss journey and and have, and promoting good optimal overall health and kind of longevity in life. Um, I want to use TikTok to kind of talk about that stuff. Anyway, um, as always, you guys stay tuned for the next video and um, until then, eat better, move more, stay committed, and you got this.